first and for foremost. Take that out of the measurement, so we only care what your device is actually doing at this point right here. So that's what we're doing right now. So uh, basically, like I said, this is uh, uh, the setup that we're going to do for for your theta uh, theta axis uh, polarization uh, range calibration. So what it's going to do is we're going to put our dipole in here. <coughs> Rotate this thing 90 degrees so that your dipole is now horizontally polarized. And we're going to use the H down there as well. Account for that loss. And then the, the vertical polarization actually will require us to take this piece out and get, a, get a, one of those sphere plastic tubes that somebody dropped back there. Yeah. We'll be using that for our virtual. <laughs> there goes our <laughs> cow, man. Yeah, there goes that cow. And big one. Yeah, they're, they're steady. They're steady. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, like I said, that, that's the plat platform there that you'll be using for the RC testing. Uh, you saw the 7TR sitting over there, so that's where it would uh, be fitted. Typically, we don't, uh, uh, I don't know who, what, how they did it at Seticom. Did they leave the 7TR in for range calibration? Uh, no, just the mass. <laughs> yeah, the antenna goes back there. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I figured. Yeah. Yeah, so, the antenna should not be in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so... so I, I would expect that nothing would be present when you're doing the actual range cal for a uh, OTA, uh, just because you know if you have something else in there that that calls for more ripple, which you don't want to do. So, so, so for vertical polarization, what do you have to be using this antenna? Same antenna. No, no, same it's antenna. Different. Different. Yeah. So what, what brings this to the, uh, the vertical position? But uh, I mean, like I said, uh, I'm gonna show you on the right way to do it, and then later on we'll talk about it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna show you the right way with our test yeah. fixture. Yeah. But we do have um, a fixture that holds your device. Uh, we call it fingers because basically it's just four prongs that hold, you can hold smaller devices. We're doing well. Marketing, yeah. marketing people. Yeah. You yeah. could uh, use that to do H and B. Well, it's up to you guys. But like I said, I'm going to show you all the right way, and then if you want to cut corners. Hey, Leon. Sorry, go ahead. Well, but I will tell you this. We've done it both ways. We haven't seen much of a difference. So, like I said, it's up to you guys. I'm just going to show you all the right way. And then, uh, like I said, if, if y'all want to uh, just use the finger, it, it's a quicker uh, either way. And we haven't seen much of a difference. Excuse me. Alrighty, any questions? Yeah. What's that unicorn thing on over there? The, the one right next to Donnie. Yeah, these no, no, the, the white one. Oh, okay. communication antennas. Yeah, two of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's another one on the other side. Those, you'll never have to move those. Those stay. Those are just used to make calls and then keep the so DUT connected. So monitoring your equipment is dropping yeah, yeah. No measurement okay. purposes. Mm. This, so. No, no, no. This will maintain your... What if you drop something... In oh, there. The How are you going to pick it up? Right. Oh, you got to so, pull so all the absorbers yeah, out and hop in. Or, and or, it's a transmitter. Yeah, yeah, I've done that before. No wonder you can that. Also, we have a, a laser here. So, say for whatever reason, this gets offline. You can use this laser, put it on a little tripod, and put it in the center of that antenna there and make sure that you're, you're centered. That, that, that's a, 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 a way to use that line. Just in case it ever gets, gets lost. Uh, the... The people that installed this should have had already done this, so, so uh, I think we're okay there. But like I said, if, if for whatever, any reason that you feel that, hey, I'm off, here's your laser. How would you know you're off? Measurements. Uh, yeah, you could, t by looking at the graph, uh -huh. if, if maybe you're 30 or 40 degrees off of what you think should be 90 degrees, you can right. go back and check that. Um, like I said, so, so this would be your laser and this belongs to you guys, so we'll all right, so now to get back on the range calibration. Uh, like we were saying before, that you're going to have to do a cable calibration because in a regular OTA test, you're not going to be utilizing the, the, uh, the cable that runs underneath the turntable. That's only for calibration purposes. Uh, so, like I said, what we're going to do right here is we're going to do a loopback cable, uh, which basically is, if we could see on the other side, it's coming from port one. Port one of the analyzer comes underneath the turntable, up through here, up to this point. Jeremy, my assistant, is going to put on a, a, a loopback cable there. <coughs> We're going to have 
going to attach that. And then he's going to run that other end of the cable to port two of the analyzer. So basically, we, we made ourselves a big loop. Yeah. We're going to ca uh, cow that out. Because like I said, we don't care about this these cables because they're they're underneath. They're not part of the, uh, the range. So we're going to calibrate that portion out. And it will be internally saved into the 8753. So you don't have to worry about applying it later or anything like that. So there's an external cable. Oh, I see him running. Yeah, there. yeah. So he, that that cable, like I said, you'll want to stash it, uh, uh, stash it somewhere because uh, so really the only use is for the loop. Well, do we so have that cable characterized too? Because that's not going to be part of the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. part so of the loop. Yeah. The yeah, normal, normal normalizing Q2, right? all the cables. So they're they're there. Yeah, yeah, but once you've done with once you've done your characterization, Q2, that, that doesn't stay in when you're doing your uh, measurements. No, no, it's going to actually do the calibration. It's no, no, it doesn't. Into it's just uh, the cal during, during the calibration, it'll get saved. Yeah, but then the actual measurement, it doesn't play us after. What I'm saying is, yeah, we're we're figuring out the the, the losses right for yeah, the yeah, cable, yeah, yeah. but we also got another cable that's in it's in this cal that's in these measurements that's not going to be part of the the setup. No, no, but for over the over the air test, these cables will not be utilized in that test. It is only utilized in the in the calibration of it, the range count. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're doing a cable count right now. We're gonna take this out of the measurement, and then we're gonna measure it downrange and, and get that loss. Mm -hmm. So you're you're basically removing this loss right now out of your calculation. Yeah, this. And, yeah, so you're moving this, you're you're eliminating this from from the measurement, and you're gonna measure from here, down range through the switches, and you're gonna actually have a value then. How much should you know from here to there? Uh, in this particular chamber, I would expect it to be around minus 45, minus. 50. So how would you measure that? Is that measured and it's gonna be in the calculation? Or no? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be measured. That's the next step, right? When you put that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now let, let's move back out now. So y'all got pictures of this? No. You want pictures? Everybody's so good? Camera you you want to get close-up pictures? Yep. <laughs>